good afternoon to all uh, it is a great privilege and honor for me to be here to talk about my second innings well uh, i am not a cricket player but i used to watch so this is about my second life post uh, uh, my retirement i already gave one ted talk in uh, kaliya university about 2 or 2 and a half years back so i thought this time it could be after my retirement what i have done so i have prepared for that well i i am from a small village like of course in india most of us are from small villages and uh, maybe my school is almost like 6 km from my uh, village i have to go and come back and all those things well completed the education and the engineering 63 68 batch at that time very difficult to get job and still luckily i was called at that time sstc not a bssc so i joined in sstc and i am very opportunity very fortunate to work with uh, sarabhai for initially for uh, two years and later with uh, dr a e muthunayagam and dr kalam and professor u r rao and uh, and kasuri rangan all i think i worked uh, most of them directly under them well during uh, 40 years i worked starting from sali liquid and uh, later towards the end the 20 years i worked on credits in sali the initial stage of course i used to even if you go to vssc and ask who is the person who you know blown very rockets they will name me because i am the one fellow who blasted many rockets because it is the initial stage you don't know what to do so i started my career but around after 8 10 years working in solid i have been selected to go to france and got trained in arial program and came back and developed the dicos engine today it is powering the pslv as well as gslv now to uh, 2085 and uh, 1985 i was asked to start the trio program well uh, 20 years i worked and finally i could develop the engine by the time my hair also became gray and they said it is time for you to retire even though they gave me two more year extension also for that we tried then i still remember i one of the management uh, talk by tangrekar a renowned speaker those days he told me he told us a story one very powerful ceo he retired so on the day everybody said sir without you this what we will do and all those things and it is very difficult you are the everything without you very difficult we will consult you and all those things they told so he was been sent with the bouquet and all those things next year uh, next day he was sitting at home thinking uh, they will call for some guidance 10 o'clock 11 o'clock no call k so he was worried what how that fellow can take the decision how he will move and all those things finally a bell rang so this man thought poor fellows they don't know even telephoning they came here to discuss with me he opened there were unknown two people were standing and he asked who are you sir we have come here to renew the telephone because it belongs to the office so that is the way a man when retires he will become in you know like that but in isro it is slightly different they will not uh, just like that and your uh, service and other things will be really take care of and uh, immediately they asked me to continue as a visiting scientist for 4 years so i have been shifted to headquarters my first innings is over and i started my uh, second inning from bangalore so i was thinking during the cryogenic uh, i was the first project director so nearly about 300 crore the government has provided to me i spent almost most of them to develop the ng so i was thinking how to repay this public money to the what way by innovative some of this because i love hydrogen by that time so how to use the hydrogen and help or to the nation something i want to do so i thought why not we'll use the hydrogen for the automobile so 
at the time, even though I was in headquarters, I have been given a directorate of quality and reliability post, but I want to work on something. So I tried to call, just like that, I called Mumbai Tata Motors and I asked, do you have any research program on developing fuel cell bus? They said, just we started, you were to call Pune. So I called Pune. They said, they luckily, few months back, we started a small unit in Bangalore itself. And there is one professor, uh, uh, Kenisti Mayal, is uh, Dr. Raja, is uh, just started. You can talk to him. So I talked to him. He welcomed me. So I put a note to our chairman at that time, Vado Nair. So jointly, ISRO and Tata Motors, we started developing the fuel cell bus. So they gave me a small good lab in Bangalore Propulsion, Liquid Propulsion System Center. So they built and gave it to me. And along with the Tata Motors, I started developing a fuel cell bus. Very interesting. I think I, in rocketry, we burned the hydrogen and oxygen with a very high temperature. You know that 3000 Kelvin and all those things and a lot of problems. But in fuel cell, with your nafion, you could, you know, stick the electrons in the cathode and you take as a load. And proton alone is uh, permitted to the, you know, nafion and it goes to our side. And mixing with the oxygen and you get only water. So exhaust is only drops of water, low pollution. So first time we got, at that time, uh, technology of fuel cell is not, even today, it is not up to that level. It is not mature. So we imported a fuel cell from Canada. And this is the Balad. They are the, even today, they are the unique people. They are developing a lot of fuel cells. So we got along 120 kilowatt uh, bank. And uh, I have taken how to feed the hydrogen, the storage and metering and all those things and safety. Because I lived with hydrogen, so it was easy for me. So the Tata gay people, they put all the electron in power system and uh, and water airline and the uh, airline and other things. So the first time we tested at Bangalore, we started with 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt. It was giving a lot of immense pleasure to see hydrogen directly converting into electricity. So it was uh, very interesting. So while doing that, and uh, we come up to 120 kilowatt, but still government has not approved hydrogen to be used on the road or anywhere because it is still, everybody feels it is very dangerous because the burning is 4% to 74%. Even with millijoule, it can ignite. So that's why everybody is afraid. But I am not, not advocating it is not that dangerous. If you know how to handle hydrogen, it is easy. Like your house, you are using uh, no propane or ethylene you know, for burning the distance. Similar way, we can also do that. So we take the bus from here to Mahendragiri. Of course, not to here also. I was told when Mahendragiri is there. It is very close to Kanyakumari where we used to do the liquid engine test. So that site, we have pure hydrogen. We have liquid hydrogen also. We convert the liquid hydrogen into gaseous hydrogen and fill in the tank. I stayed there for a month. And we, whatever we developed, we could, uh, uh, we could uh, integrate on the bus. And uh, first time, I think 2015, I run the first uh, fuel cell bus at uh, Mahendra Giri. I was, after uh, starting the bus, I was inside. I forgot about my age. I started jumping and running inside because without any exhaust, the bus is going Nicely, about more than 10 kilometers, we were traveling inside the Mahendra. You could see Dr. Raja on the other side and Mahendra, the director and other people. So it was a very, very interesting time. So along with that, I thought I want to spend some time with my, uh, my family also. So my wife was cooking for so many years. So I thought, why not I cook for some time for her? So I know her test. I taste. And I started cooking. I have yeah, developed a good uh, passion towards uh, cooking. It is also a science. Very interesting. So I started doing Then a lot of competition came. I started participating. In one of the competition in Hyderabad, I think uh, Hindu paper, they, every year they used to conduct a cooking uh, competition. So I joined uh, one of the uh, one year. I think first year I won. 
second year and they thought I am too old bad to cook so bad to cook so they did they give me the prize for the second time but my wife was little what do you know why they didn't give for you you nicely you cook so like that I started maybe my grandson also I taught him how to make dosa and other things and uh, maybe during that time I tried to do some more uh, work like babysitting and uh, you know age and time you know that the parents they have to do but if you go up in India I would have told I have aged I am far away and other thing since it is in US immediately me I told without me how you will survey I am coming there so he went there and they spent a lot of time for babysitting also for quite some time or about six months we could do that then during this uh, after I come back here I thought my childhood ambition is to become a teacher. See, you might have seen uh, most of the kids, if you ask what you want to be, everybody will tell I want to be a doctor or a star, or all those things. But I will love to be a teacher. But due to engineering, afterwards joined in ISRO and I could not fulfill my ambition. So luckily in Bangalore, give me five, there is uh, one. And... Uh, uh, and there is one more company called uh, uh, the Sky Explorer in Mumbai. There are, one lady is running that this thing. These two people, they are having uh, India as well as globally. They are connecting the kids. They are teaching astrono ast uh, astronomy and the rocketry and other things. They asked me, how, why don't you teach for the students? Well, I cherished interacting with the young mind Maybe sometimes in Arab countries or in uh, maybe from Singapore and India, so many people, they started uh, talking to me and I was really excited to, you could see the uh, people. At that time, two more platform I got is called Arivial Paravai in Kanyagumari district and another one is Arivial Palahan by central government, it is in Chennai. So those two uh, people also, they are doing a lot of interaction work with the students and this thing, especially on uh, green energy and, you know, all those things. So what I was doing, but still I used to continue to go to ISRO for most of the meetings and other things. That's what the ISRO, one of the best thing is they never allow you to retire very fast. So even around the 2000, if I'm correct, uh, 15 or 16, when I was going to the ESSC, one day one young man, he called, sir, can I meet you in the guest house? Yes, fine, you please come. So he came and asked, can, I, can you join with me? I want to start a private rocket company. And I laughed. How can a private man can make a rocket? Then he explained the second time, third time, I am convinced. So I said, I am there because I am also at that time in Hyderabad. So we, I started along with him. It is a three-stage uh, solid motor and with the upper stage with a liquid and currently controlling the first and second stage again with a liquid. So I was leading the liquid side. Very interestingly, he introduced all new technology than even I can say some of that things. It's like a carbon fiber motor case for the complete uh, first and second stage and third stage. And fourth stage, the engine we plan to use uh, uh, 3D printed engines. So 3D printing is very interesting. So I learned a lot and started working on that. And it is a super alloy in Colonel 718. It is printed and you could see and uh, this injector, if it would have made uh, some 20 years back in ISRO, it is would have been made with 20 components and welding or bracing and other roots. Here it is a single piece Directly, if you give the 3D directly to that, it could be done. So I involved with the fabricator and trying to develop and this injector was made. And parallelly, I started working on cryogenic because of course you may be telling in ISRO I was doing with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, very complicated work. But even though I love hydrogen, it is a density wise, it is very, very low. So more booster application plus Hydrogen is very costly. So nowadays the current is the liquefied natural gas LNG. I started working on locks and the LNG. I developed a 1000 and 2000 Newton uh, cryogenic engine 
This is also 3D printed, only the combustion chamber, which is a double wall with a lot of uh, grooves. And uh, even the test stand also from, you know, we manufactured everything and took it from here to Nagpur. And uh, we, I tested uh, successfully and two or three uh, cryogenic uh, engines. So ringer should be on your hand, not on heart. So maybe once one gentleman from US, I think, he asked, you, you don't have any retirement, why you are working uh, always uh, like this? Then I thought, I was telling to him, uh, you can see the cup is 1975, my birthday, my daughter took it. Now, five years almost over, now I'm 80. Maybe that upper number has increased, but the lower number is still not increased. Still I am. So you may be asking when the second innings will be over. Maybe till the last breath, I want to interact with the youngsters like you and get knowledge from you as well as I want to interact with you. Thank you very much for listening.